This is video one of a three-part series that will focus on using MaxSurf with GHS geometry files. In this video, we'll import a GHS geometry file of an ocean research vessel, review the components of the model, and compare hydrostatic results with the existing trim and stability book. Video two will demonstrate other types of analysis using MaxSurf stability. Video three will demonstrate MaxSurf motions for sea keeping and MaxSurf resistance for powering analysis. As a brief introduction to MaxSurf, it's during the initial development stages of a vessel that we go through iterations in the design spiral while exploring variations of the hull. Each iteration can impact compartmentation, tank definition, primary structure scantlings, and the location of major, major equipment. All of these variables affect stability and performance. All within the same integrated platform, MaxSurf enables a naval architect to get answers very quickly with instant graphical feedback using a 3D NURB surface model of the hull for highly accurate results. Both MaxSurf and GHS have a well-proven track record that spans over 30 years. However, the two systems are fundamentally different in terms of what they are designed to do and user interaction. GHS focuses on hydrostatics, stability, and longitudinal strength by providing a programming language environment. Once the geometry is created, the GHS user types keyboard commands with specific parameters and syntax rules that tell the program what the current state of the vessel is, the series of calculations to be performed, and the definition of the output. The last two sets of these commands can be automated to some extent for repetitive tasks by using what are called run files. In contrast, MaxSurf is a Windows-based system of many more capabilities than GHS that encompasses vessel hull modeling, design, and multiple types of analysis. In comparison, MaxSurf is very easy to learn, which is a big reason why most naval architecture colleges worldwide use MaxSurf as part of the teaching curriculum. Dozens of YouTube videos and excellent documentation make learning MaxSurf fun and fast. Links to the best videos for learning MaxSurf can be found on our website, charlestonmarineconsulting.com. This slide provides a summary of the MaxSurf stability module. It compares favorably with the capabilities of GHS. Two key differentiators our tight compatibility with Excel spreadsheets and robust definition of low cases, tanks, and compartments with instant graphical feedback. There is a time-saving batch analysis feature to run multiple types of stability analyses for many different load cases. All of the MaxSurf modules have a Microsoft COM automation capability allowing users familiar with Visual Basic to automate modeling tasks and complex analysis calculations from other applications like Word, Excel, or AutoCAD. Unlike GHS, MaxSurf provides a user-friendly built-in stability criteria library that is a mouse click away. The library is very comprehensive and it covers all of the major regulatory bodies around the world as you can see on the slide. This provides the user with a straightforward pass-fail summary report in the results. The GHS geometry file for this demo is a 190-foot East Ocean research vessel that has been in service for over 10 years. The hull geometry has a good bit of detail including various appendages and non-buoyant volumes. Our company was tasked to adjust the permanent ballast to remove a list condition perform a stability or inclining test, and provide hull resistance calculations for naval architecture partner firm of ours to study new propeller options for an upgraded engine. For this project, we use the MaxSurf stability and resistance modules. Step one was simply importing the GHS GF file into MaxSurf, which read in everything that we needed. And after verifying the model, we ran hydrostatics and compared the results to ensure that they matched the trim and stability book, which was prepared using GHS. Now let's take a look at MaxSurf stability in action. 
So once you're inside of MaxSurf, uh, step one is to import the GH GHS geometry. So we'll just go into the file, pull down, import GHS sections, select our vessel geometry uh, file, which is simply a text file. And we see this first message, which is telling us which components of the GHS model read in as buoyant components and which ones read in as uh, non-buoyant volumes with negative permeability. So we just answer yes to that. And this is our first glimpse of the edges of the model. We're going to turn the sections on. So we're looking at a perspective view and uh, we see the hull sections of the GHS uh, these are transverse hull sections. You can also see some of the appendages of the model. These are the Z drives. And I can render this view to, s to give a better look at what read in. And over here on the left is the assembly pane, which shows all the various components of this model. Um, so this orange uh, feature is actually what's called the sail in uh, the GHS terminology of the, the superstructure of the model. And if I turn rendering back off, um, I'm going to use this feature to, let's see, well, we can turn on uh, other components of the model. Uh, we can see what are defined as intact tanks and other items. So what I'm going to do first is uh, make sure we set our units correctly for this model. So we'll go into the data units make sure in this case we're going to work in decimal feet and long tons and we also want to check our frame of reference this is very important so we're going to do that by selecting frame of reference and one thing i can see is that our water line needs to be set so the design water line for this vessel is ten and a half feet and over here on the left i'm going to set the aft perp to the design water line and we'll set the forward perpendicular to it as well. So once you do that and you look at this, now the model looks correct. Um, I'll turn the water line on and you see this is our zero point for how we're working. This is the forward perpendicular, this is the after perpendicular. The next thing we're going to check is um, we want to look at the, the definitions of all these uh, components that read in. And if I look at this, let me change the color scheme. We have a lot of control of doing this. If I switch to this type of scheme, it might be easier to see. And if I turn on my tanks and compartments, uh, these, and I, I can highlight over here on the left various components. So you can see that's the skeg, uh, Z drive, uh, this is the foxel, etc. But, and, and that information also shows up over here on the left. Uh, but there's another uh, handy window where I can look at all of this and see all the details of what read in. So every one of these entities that you see over here on the left that have read in uh, are in what's called the room definition window. And as I scroll through this, I can see which items are categorized as non-buoyant which are, are tanks, etc. And what I notice here is that after our last tank, which is a, a sewage tank, we see voids, and these are still categorized as tanks. So we need to change that to make them compartments, and everything following this uh, actually should be compartments. So we're going to use the fill down feature in MaxSurf that uh, quickly changes that. And all of these uh, other values, these this is all read in right from the GHS geometry file, even the specific gravity of the fluids, uh, the intact and damaged permeabilities, as well as the boundaries of the tanks. And you cannot edit the, uh, the boundaries of these uh, compartments or tanks. That's by design. Uh, nor can you edit these uh, the names. The only thing you can edit are the type designation, and that's to correct instances where it doesn't read in the way it's supposed to. So once I close this, and now when I look at the intact tanks, and I'll turn the sections off, 
I can see these these tanks all show up even with the sounding pipes so this tank up forward if I highlight it is the uh, fuel oil tank up forward on the port side and here's the one on the uh, the starboard side the other thing I'm going to do is we're going to do a quick hydrostatics run and compare the results with the uh, trim and stability book so to do that I just um, select upright hydrostatics this is where I can select various types of analysis I want to run and I want to uh, we'll specify a range of drafts between 2 feet and let's say 12 feet in increments of 0 0.5 feet and now we can run hydrostatics by just selecting the run button so the hydrostatics have just run this is my uh, table of results and I can actually customize the results that I want here by the way uh, with this uh, window here for format of whatever I want to show up in either the table or the graph here's the graph of output um, of the various hydrostatic curves and if I want to compare this to the trim and stability book uh, for this demo, we'll just pull up the trim and stability book right here. This trim and stability book uh, for the vessel, this was done using GHS. So if I compare these results to the, uh, the results that we have, and I go into the design draft of 10.5 feet, I have a displacement of 1,190 long tons. And if I compare that to what I have over here, uh, that does agree with the uh, trim and stability book. So this is about all we wanted to cover in this video to give you the first intro to Max Surf. And in the next video, part two, we're going to drill into a lot more of the other types of analysis using Max Surf stability. Um, and we'll cover most of what you see here on the left. And I'm going to go to my PowerPoint closing slide so you know how to get in touch with us. Our website is charlestonmarineconsulting.com. If you want to see a lot more videos and uh, details on Max Surf, uh, please go to our website. Thanks for watching.